Hey everybody, it's uh, Pastor Davi um, uh, tagging in for Pastor Sharon today. Um, she's going to be um, leading a lot of the discussion on this, but I thought I'd get the party started on parables. Um, so we got, um, I'm very excited about parables. Um, I think I'll read the text and then I'll talk about why I love parables um, and why you might consider also loving parables. So this is uh, for Sunday, February the 12th on the Narrative Lectionary. This is uh, Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 43. Cool. Um, and uh, I'm going to read from the New Revised Standard Version, which is uh, the translation of my childhood, so I'm a sucker for it, and also what I had handy. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No. For in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first, and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Ooh, I have some here. Hang on. Visual aid. Teeny tiny. Let's see if we can see them on the. They're teeny tiny. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. <coughs> he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Jesus told the crowds all these things in parables. Without a parable, he told them nothing. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth to speak in parables. I will proclaim what has been hidden from the foundation of the world. Let's see uh, which prophet that is. Check my footnote here. Maybe Isaiah? I have to look back in on that. Okay. <coughs> then he left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him, saying, Explain to us the parables of the weeds of the field. I think, okay, this is, I'm going to wait. Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one, and the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and they will throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. Yeah, that's the end of the passage. So um, <coughs> I don't want to take too much of your time because I'm excited to hear what you make of these. There's a lot of stories, and I would invite you to just take maybe one or two of these parables and see what it's like when you sit with it. Um, I believe that parables are um, really special in scripture. Um, Jesus' parables are not really like anything else in um, the Gospels. Uh, even in the Hebrew Bible, there's there's some things that are kind of parables, but not really. And um, I'm not even sure how much parallel there is for them in other parts of the ancient world, which is really um, kind of surprising. Um, there are these little stories that seem a little bit like fables, except um, fables tend to have not always, but tend to have a clear meaning. If you read a fable from Aesop, 
I don't know if Aesop included the meaning or if it just, um, if he just, uh, if later um, people added like, oh, this means to not be greedy or whatever. Um, parables resist that attempt to make meaning of them. This, um, I, I got so excited I almost interrupted my own reading. Um, this passage is, I believe, the only time in the Gospels that Jesus explains a parable, which means uh, many scholars believe that uh, Jesus probably didn't actually do that because throughout the rest of the Gospels, for the most part, he's telling parables um, and letting them be the like mysterious and wonderful stories they are. Um, uh, this guy, John Dominic Crossan, has a book called The Dark Interval, and he talks about different forms of literature and what they do. Um, and it builds this argument that parable um, kind of remakes or um, turns upside down our understanding of the world. So characters that might be maligned or forgotten turn out to be important. Um, and even like our attempt to understand them like um, shakes our mind's ability to understand in really helpful and I would say sacred ways. <coughs> so um, I'm going to talk about the mustard seed. Um, there's a lot of interpretations of this parable. There's a lot to be said about it. Here's my favorite, uh, which doesn't mean it's the right one, um, but it has really been a gift to me. So I think it's quite lovely as just when I was a child, I, I like was taught that this was a parable about how big things can grow from really little things. Kind of like that, um, um, Jesus says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains, right? See, like teeny tiny. Um, these are like dried and I think roasted mustard seeds. But, um, later on, I learned that um, some scholars believe um, that in the ancient world, mustard plants, because they're not really trees, they're kind of like, like big shrubby shrubs, uh, <laughs> um, were kind of a nuisance and they could kind of get places. Um, it reminds me of our relationship in Northwest Washington with, um, you know, blackberries, uh, Himalayan back blackberries, um, where like they'll just grow everywhere and if they're in your yard, you have to like fight them back. For the kingdom of heaven to be like this shrub that is a nuisance, and not only that, but to be like the shrub that is a nuisance that grows into a whole tree and um, <coughs> all the birds of the air, what's this one? The birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Um, well, I don't know. Maybe it's just a story about something big something little growing into something big. And if that's true, like what a miraculous thing, because um, those of us who are friends with children know what it's like to see something little grow into something big and how precious that is. But if it's about this uh, thing that has been rejected, I keep trying to like show off my mustard seed. There's no way you're seeing that in the, anyway. Um, this thing that has been rejected comes to be its own space, and not only that, but a space of refuge and a space of solace. That sounds like the gospel to me. And if I'm resting in that interpretation, if I'm saying, well, that's what that parable means, I don't need to worry about it. I think I've missed an opportunity, and I think I've missed an invitation from the Spirit. Because maybe there's something else in that story that I haven't noticed yet that I want to come back to, that I want to turn again and again. Um, that's probably plenty to get started. Um, does one or another of these parables kind of spark for you? Do you have a particular relationship with parables? Um, I wonder what it's like for you when you try to tell your own version of this um, to your friend or your family. Um, yeah, I, I guess I don't have a really clear prompt except to say, <coughs> how do these particular parables and these few lines from Matthew um, start to draw you into this changed world that Jesus is proclaiming? If that's not a good enough mystery, then I don't know. I guess I should go plant some mustard seeds.
blessings to you. Um, may you be strengthened in the sacred work of bringing one's questions to um, scripture and seeing what breaks open.